Hi, my name is Jalisa, and I'm back for another video. And today is going to be another uh, classic Tourette's video um, because I'm excited about a new term, actually. Um, but first, I just want to say my my Tourette's has been interrupting me a lot and distracting me a lot. And on top of that, fuck, I have a lot of brain fog recently. Uh, thanks to my lovely chronic illness, um, and I also have ADHD, so this video, uh, just because of the way I am right now, is going to be really rambly and all over the place, and I'm probably going to lose my train of thought a few times, um, yeah. but we're all going to get through it, and if that's something that bothers you too much, you can click off, it's no worry, um, but anyways, yeah, I wanted to discuss a new term with the community um, because I'm excited about it. Fuck! Fuck off! So, oh, the other day I was featured in a blog by Jess Tom, aka Tourette's Hero, um, which is how I knew about this blog. Um, and I'll link it down below in the description if anyone wants to read it. I would highly recommend it, though there is but a bit of a trigger warning because it is about some like really challenging ticks. Um, so if that bothers you or if you're worried it might set you off, um, fuck off. Don't worry about it. But anyone who wants to read it can. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a really good blog. Hey, but I wanted to sort of focus in on this certain part of the blog that when I read it sort of blew my mind. Um, because I think it puts Tourette's in a sort of entirely new framework. Hi, you're gay. So what is this term? But this term is oppositional tics. And what I, but what I mean by that, or how Jess defined it, is tics that are the opposite of what you want to do. Hi. They're ticks that you do because you don't want to do them. Do, which I think is brilliant because as someone who's been living with a somewhat severe Tourette's for the past few years, uh, the terms that I've had to work with to describe my experience are coprolalia and copropraxia. Um, and for those of you who are new to Tourette's or something like that. I do have other videos about this, um, but basically coprolalia fuck, is huh, what I just did. It's saying swear words, saying things that are socially inappropriate, etc. Uh, coprapraxia is the same thing, but with gestures. Fuck off. And but those are terms that I've had to use to describe myself Fuck, that quite frankly have never actually described my experience, but they're the things that I've had for the longest time. Um, the problem that I have with those terms is that it categorizes my tics based on how uncomfortable I might make others in my given society. Um, which seems like a way to categorize ticks that's not accurate, um, fuck off, but that, um, centers the wrong people, it centers other people instead of my experience, fuck off, and quite frankly, I don't find it very respectful either, um, but it's what I've had to work with, oh, and also I think it's very stigmatizing, um, I'm sure anyone will know that uh, coprolalia and copropraxia, um, or copper phenomena, if you will, and want to say it, a big fancy word, um, jo those six are very, very stigmatized, both in and out of the Tourette's community. Um, but, uh, they're seen as, fuck, well, if you're outside of the community, they're seen as a joke, primarily, and inside the Tourette's community, they're seen as this freakish, 
symptom that we can't discuss ever, um, which is pretty terrible, to be honest. But I think the term oppositional tics changes a lot of that. For one, um, sorry, I have notes. Um, it centers, for one, it centers my experience as a Tourette'er and the experiences of Tourette'ers. But before it, it centers other people's experiences. So, what oppositional tics primarily affect us because we do not want to do them. They can affect others, and I don't want to discount that at all because there are people with really challenging tics. Um, and not just like swearing, but saying things that are really hurtful, um, or injuring others, fuck, or, or breaking things. Those are all real tics that people have. Good. Um, and those I would classify as oppositional tics. They're also tics that we do because we don't want to do them. Um, I think I a little bit lost my train of thought, but whatever. But yeah, it centers us first. And I really like that because defining, huh, huh, defining ticks based on someone else's experience doesn't really make sense to me um, as a category. I don't think it's right to define medical symptoms based on if they make someone else uncomfortable because that's what these are, medical symptoms. Mm. But yeah, I also think it does a lot of work to destigmatize people with more severe Tourette's. Um, because the thing about oppositional tics is when you think about it, most, maybe all people with Tourette's have them to some extent. But they're not this freakish, outlandish symptom. But they're a normal part of Tourette's. So what do I mean by that? You might be saying, like, no, because not everyone with threat swears, but oppositional tics isn't about swearing. Fuck. What? Again, they're about doing something because you don't want to do them. And I don't know anyone but who has vocal tics that doesn't feel the urge to make noise or get louder in a silent room. That is a completely normal um, oppositional tic that many people with Tourette's have. Fuck, fuck off. But some people just have more than others, and that's part of what can make Tourette's so debilitating if you're severe, is because some people just have a high huh, amount of oppositional tics. Um, whereas other people might be more moderate. It's a spectrum, right? But, but Regardless of where you are on that spectrum, it's still a completely normal part of Tourette's. Um, I also d think it does a lot of work to destigmatize swearing and take a little bit of the weight off of that. Because as a person who has Tourette's, again, this is why it describes my experience a little bit better. Fuck. Huh. Um not all or even most of my swearing is an oppositional tick to me um and i suspect some other people with threats out there though we'll all, we'll all have different different experiences i can't talk but um this is actually a better example of an oppositional tick that is not swearing. Um, but it's not the time. Uh, anyways. <laughs> Perfect example. So not all of my, um, geez, not all of my swearing is oppositional. Um, I've quite frankly gotten over a lot of my fears about swearing in public. It doesn't bother me. I hardly think about it, to be honest. Especially now, I'm on a ch I'm on my channel that's mostly about Tourette's, um, and I'm quite comfortable with my symptoms. Fuck. Um, so yeah, that doesn't 
It's happening a little bit more because I'm thinking about it, but it's not bothering me. So that wouldn't be an oppositional tick for me. But, but things like my neck ticks, because my neck actually hurts quite a bit for my ticks, and I don't want to do them, that's an oppositional tick. It doesn't have anything to do with whether you're swearing or not swearing. It's whether you want to do it or not. Um, so, yeah, I'm losing my train of thought way too much, and it is way too late, and I'm hungry. So I'm going to stop for now. Hopefully I got through everything that I needed to get, but I'm getting so tired. Um, and yeah, I'm going to go eat. But I wanted to just sort of explain that really quick because I think it's a brilliant term and I want to know what other people think of it. Um, and I especially want to eventually talk to some doctors or researchers or basically professionals um, that study people with Tourette's or work with people with Tourette's. Um, but, because again, it just seems like such a um, more accurate category that deserves to be studied and educated about and all of that. Um, so yeah, just let me know what you think. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm hella tired. Um, you could probably tell. Yeah, it's time. All right, bye.